Your 20s are a crucial decade. This is when you begin your career, start taking responsibilities as an adult, work on your finances, perhaps get into shape. And for many people, this is the time when you finally start taking your style more seriously. And as a man who's fast approaching his 30s and a big fashion enthusiast, today I would like to share with you 10 style tips that I wish I learned sooner in my 20s, starting with five things you shouldn't do and then five things that you absolutely should do. Number one, don't think that there is one singular way that clothes should fit, because that isn't the case. I wish it was. I wish there was just one standard way that every item of clothing should fit, because that would make things so much easier. You would just have to find that perfect fit in each category of clothing and call it a day. My very logical brain would love that, but the truth is that is simply not the case. Take jeans, for example. You can go for a slim fit, which would be deemed as the most standard one, but you can also go for a regular fit, a skinny fit, a relaxed fit, a wide fit, all of these are possible options to have a different silhouette of jeans. Same with t-shirts. I actually like to alternate between a slim fit tee and an oversized one depending on the look that I want to go for. Even tailoring is now getting modernized with looser, less structured suits getting some attention. Even though that's still mostly considered as a fashion statement rather than the norm, it's nice to see the variety of styles available today. So although there will always be a place for classic timeless silhouettes, do not be afraid to experiment with different silhouettes of clothes. Number two, don't buy things in every color. I know how tempting it is once you find an item you really like, when the fit is perfect, the design is perfect, and you just want to get it in every color. But trust me, that is not a good idea. You don't need it in every color. And what's most likely going to happen is that you'll just keep going back to your favorite one or two colors that you love most, and you'll rarely wear the others. So instead, figure out which colors you love wearing the most, which ones flatter your skin the best, and stick to those colors. And if you do have some sweater that you really love in brown, let's say, and you really want to get a similar white one, at least get a slightly different version of it, with a different texture perhaps, or a different neckline. My personal rule is to stick to two colors max per item, and only go for the second color if I absolutely love the item, and I consider it a wardrobe staple. Something that I'll wear over and over again, like jeans or a sweatshirt. The only exception is base layer tops, such as t-shirts and tank tops, where I'll go up to three or four colors. Number three, don't buy into every trend. This should be common knowledge, but as much as we all know that it's not a good idea to fall into trends, it's sometimes hard not to be influenced by everything that we see on social media, on our favorite celebrities, and in pop culture in general. Even if it's on an unconscious level, you're bound to be somewhat influenced by what's considered trendy at the moment. With that said, I don't think trends are necessarily a bad thing, or that you can never wear something trendy. I think you absolutely can see something that you feel is cool and trendy you like how it looks, you experiment with it, and then implement it into your own style. However, try to be intentional with your choices. There is a balance between never experimenting and buying into every single trend. A good little tip that I like to use is ask yourself before you buy anything, and you have to be honest with yourself, do you really think that you will keep wearing that item at this time in two years if it's no longer the cool thing to wear? If the answer is yes, go for it. Number four, don't buy something just because it's a bargain. Many times in my life, and I know some of you will relate to this, many times I have impulsively bought items that I didn't need just because they were on sale or because they were cheap, and I thought, why not? This is such a good deal, it's worth it. But it's not. It is not worth it if you genuinely did not want it in the first place. So my rule now is to never buy anything on sale that I wouldn't have paid full price for. Number five, don't keep clothing that doesn't suit you. You should be doing a check-in with your wardrobe every six months at least. And if there are things that no longer suit your style, that you never wear, it's probably time to get rid of them. It might not seem like a big deal at first, but having a cluttered wardrobe can take up so much mental space, making it more difficult to put together outfits in the morning. And it's just not a good feeling to see a wardrobe with pieces that you don't love every time you open it. You want to have a good, positive relationship with your wardrobe. Also, when you 
declutter your wardrobe, please try to either sell your clothing, give them to friends or family, or donate them to charity so that it doesn't end up in a landfill somewhere. Fashion is not the most environmentally conscious industry, so by not throwing your clothes in the trash, you are helping on a small scale with little effort, and you can even make some money back by selling it. Fashion is one of the tools in your toolbox to improve your style and your appearance, but the best outfit won't help much if your hair is a mess or if your skin looks bad. So I want to take a quick moment to talk to you about our sponsor, Geology. As you know, Geology is the king at keeping your skin looking clean, healthy, and spotless. They've also just launched a brand new product specifically for your hair, the Co-Wash. This product is a game changer. The Co-Wash is not a shampoo, it's not a conditioner, it's not a two-in-one. It is a hair care product formulated to nourish not only your hair, but also the skin underneath it. And most importantly, it does not strip the skin away from its essential oils like most shampoos do. So unlike shampoos, which you shouldn't really be using every day, the co-wash is great for daily washes. For example, if like me, you're trying to get back on that fitness routine, exercising and getting sweaty every day, you can use this for daily washes and leave the shampoo for a less frequent deep clean once or twice a week. The co-wash has two formulas to fit your individual needs. One for more dry skin, the smoothing co-wash, and one for more oily skin, the cooling co-wash. I'm using the cooling co-wash since my skin tends to be more oily. This has been selling like crazy since it launched and for good reason. You can check it out by going to the link in the description and you can use code TIM20 for 20% off on your purchase on the co-wash or any other individual products. Now back to our style tips. Number six, do identify your wardrobe staples. I think we've all been through a moment when you open your wardrobe and struggle to put a good outfit together because you realize you don't even like half of the stuff in there. This naturally happens when your style evolves or if you buy things too impulsively or fall into trends as we've spoken about. So in order to avoid this scenario, create a list of wardrobe staples that reflect your personal style. I like to write things down so in a tangible way, this could look something like this. Create a different category for each type of clothing and write down your favorite pieces in each category. For example, in tops, I would say oversized white tee. In pants, I would say straight fit jeans, gray sweat pants, and smart trousers. In outerwear, I might say long coats. You ideally want to have at least one item per category, but probably not more than three, maybe four. Remember, we're talking about your core wardrobe staples here. Once you have your list down, these are the items that you should invest in the most. Because a trendy piece that you'll only wear a handful of times, not a good idea to spend a lot on that. But a wardrobe staple that you'll wear time and time again and essentially live in, now that is worth spending on. From there, you should be building the rest of your wardrobe around these staple items, meaning that anything else you buy, you should be able to mix and match seamlessly with your wardrobe staples. Number seven, do put comfort above all. Never sacrifice comfort. As much as you think that sweater looks incredible on you and you'll deal with the fabric being a little bit itchy, that the shoes will for sure loosen up a bit, that those pants aren't that tight. Trust me, if you're not fully comfortable in your clothes, you'll end up wearing them far less, if not never. So do not sacrifice comfort just because you really like an item. It might look good, but it also needs to feel good. If you can afford to, and emphasis on this, if you can afford to invest a little bit more to get a sweater made from good quality natural fibers like wool or even cashmere. Not only is it going to be more comfortable on your skin, it's also going to keep you warmer than the cheaper polyester versions. And if it's a little stretch in your budget, in my opinion, I would rather have one high quality sweater that's been well designed with a great silhouette and construction rather than three cheaply made sweaters with subpar fabric and bad construction. Number eight, do dress for your lifestyle. Take into account every element of how you live your day-to-day -day life. What is your job? Do you have a dress code to respect? What are your hobbies? Or how do you spend your time outside of work? Do you often go to venues where you need to be dressed smart? Or are you a major homebody? All of these elements should impact your style and influence the kind of clothing that you'll have in your wardrobe. Because you need to be practical after all. If you're working a finance job on Wall Street, you're gonna need a handful of suits, shirts, and dress shoes. Shoes. Whereas if you work in a creative field, maybe the bulk of your wardrobe is more casual and you can be more playful with it. 
In any case, although your occupation will have a considerable impact on your wardrobe, that doesn't mean that you can't have a completely different style outside of work if you so desire. You could be an investment banker during the day and DJ during the night, or a marketing executive during the week and a ballroom dancer on the weekends. I think it's quite cool when someone takes little parts of their life, the affinities they have, and incorporate those elements effortlessly in their wardrobe. For example, someone who's really into nature and the outdoors might choose to incorporate more hiking shoes or tech wear or more rugged pieces into their everyday wardrobe. Or someone who loves a certain style of art or painting might translate that into their style through geometrical shapes or a dominant color palette. Style is meant to be personal. It's probably why they call it personal style. So consider your interests and lifestyle when developing your fashion. It's fun, it allows you to be creative and express yourself, which is what style is all about. Number nine, do organize your wardrobe well. There is no better feeling than having a clean, tidy, well-organized wardrobe where everything is visible, color-coordinated, and you know exactly where each item is. There are different ways to organize your wardrobe, but what I like to do is to separate my clothing into categories. So t-shirts on one pile, one pile for sweatshirts, one pile for hoodies, one pile for knitwear. All jackets and coats are on hangers, as well as shirts and pants are also on hangers. Everything is then ordered by color and size of the item. And when I say size, I don't mean small, medium, etc. I mean how large the item is. So slimmer slash shorter slash lighter items would be placed on the top or on the left. And the more oversized, longer, heavier items would be placed on the bottom of a pile or on the right if stored horizontally. My colors start with the neutrals. White, grays, black, beige, brown, then the non-neutrals. This is roughly how I like to organize my wardrobe. I'm sure it might seem a little little over the top at first to some of you, but my logical, slightly OCD brain loves having things organized logically and optimally. You don't have to do it this exact way, of course, but I would definitely recommend finding some way that works for you and keeps your wardrobe organized. You will free up so much mental space and you'll start being more intentional with your wardrobe, which will then ripple into your style improving. And number 10, do buy slowly and intentionally. This could be the most important tip of the video. Once you've identified and built your staple wardrobe, you're dressing for your lifestyle with an organized, decluttered wardrobe, and you're being mindful of your purchases, not buying into every trend or every bargain, the natural next step in your style journey is to keep on evolving. Experiment here and there, discover new brands, fabrics, silhouettes. However, my advice, and I strongly believe in this, is to do that evolving and experimenting slowly and intentionally. When you see an item you like, answer these five questions. Do I really love this piece for the design of it and not just because it's the cool new trend of the moment? Will I be able to style it with my current wardrobe in at least five different outfits? Do I like the color of it? Have I worn this color before and will it mix and match well with my current wardrobe? Does the fabric look like it's high quality? And will I honestly wear this in two years time? If you answer yes to all five of these, you still don't buy it. You put it in your wish list or save the URL, you wait one week, and if you still want it in seven days, then and only then you make the purchase. I sometimes keep things in tabs for weeks before pulling the trigger, and sometimes I realize I don't actually love it or need it as much as I thought I did. I would highly recommend everybody to apply this tip because it is a game changer. And those were my 10 style tips that I wish I learned sooner in my 20s. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I hope you learned a thing or two that you'll apply, and if you did, please share this video with a friend that might enjoy it as well. Thank you again to Geology for sponsoring the video. Go to the links in the description to check out their new co-wash as well as their skincare. My friend, I wish you a beautiful day and I will see you in the next one. That it's not a good idea. Ah! Okay. You look like a guy from uh, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, the dog. I don't have a childhood. Oh yeah, good point. I'm really gonna start rapping. And most importantly, it does not strip the skin away from its essential oils. <laughs> like a lot of shampoos do. So unlike shampoos, which you shouldn't really be using every day.